Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Today I'm going to be painting Safari Sunset number two <laughs> and I'm sipping on some pineapple tea today. Uh, I call this number two because there is a number one which is part of my cookies and canvas series that I have available for kids and uh, recently I, I just thought it'd be a fun idea to take some of those kid style paintings and convert them into adult paintings or more advanced paintings. So I put a poll out for my Patreon members in our painting group on Facebook, which is Michelle's Painting Group, to, I gave them a few options, and this was the one that they, they really strongly <laughs> wanted me to turn into a more advanced painting. So I will put the link for um, the original one down below in the video description for you to check that out. Um, and if you're interested in learning about the Patreon membership program, it's got a bunch of different benefits that help to increase your painting skills. I have that information down below in the video as well. And I think that's it. So now it's time to let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna be using a stretched and primed 10 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along, you could of course switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are Mars Black, Burnt Umber, which I like to call brown, Fire Red, uh, Titanium White, Deep Yellow, Burnt Sienna, which sometimes I call Rust, and Purple Violet. And of course you can switch these up as well, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm gonna be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number four round synthetic brush. And I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I might refer to these as small, medium, and large, or I'll just call them out by name as I use them. And of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna to wanna to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually, like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting a base coat onto the canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint but I'm gonna use my number four round to pre-mix a custom color. The colors I'm gonna be using in this step are white, yellow, burnt sienna, purple, black, and brown. So I'm using all my colors except for red. I'm gonna pre-mix myself a lavender color that we're gonna be using on this step in the sky, but we'll also use a little bit later in our landscape and maybe a little bit in our rocks and other places too. <laughs> so I've got it pre-mixed on my palette here so you can see where I am headed as I'm creating this custom color. It's mostly my uh, purple violet and then I put a little bit of white in it to lighten it up and a little bit lighter than that and then I just put a dot of black into it in order to kind of desaturate it a little bit. So well, that was probably too much, just a teeny tiny dot of black paint. So I'm looking to, what I've, what I've done is I've taken my purple violet and lightened it and desaturated it a little bit. So when I add black and white to anything, that's adding gray and gray is in essence kind of 
taking away that, that vibrancy of the pigment. So it's desaturating it. So this is where I'm headed with my purple. Um, I'm gonna call this lavender. I'll call that purple when I use it later. So that's where I'm headed. Once I've got that color in place, I am ready to start painting. So how I'm gonna approach this base coat is I'm gonna go from my where I want my sun to go out. So for me, I'm going to have my sun somewhere in through here. It's going to be resting, dropping right behind that horizon line. So I'm going to start with white paint right around here. And then I'm going to paint yellow. I'll use white and yellow to get it to gradually kind of fade out um, into the atmosphere. And then I'm going to use my lavender color up in through here. On the lower area below the horizon line, so my horizon is going to be somewhere in here, below this area, I'm going to be using more of my um, burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of yellow, white, and brown just to give myself a, a, a base coat to the ground as well. So I'm going to start right here with my white paint. Um, Biggest kind of advice I can give you is never have a ton of paint on your brush. Right now I'm just using a little bit on the tip of my brush. It's going to be tough to see where I want my sun to go, but I'm going to have it somewhere in this vicinity. So if this is about halfway left or right on my canvas, I'm about halfway between that and the edge of my canvas. So somewhere in through here is almost the right side of it. And then I'm just going to kind of give myself a circular kind of area about that big. <laughs> I'm going to pick up white plus a touch of yellow and I'm showing you how little yellow I am using so you can um, understand that I'm really not using a lot and I can softly just go around where I want that sun to go something like this. You can bring it down into the horizon too if you want to. Um, we're going to kind of amplify this later but this is just going to get us started. So now that I've got that on there, I can kind of just use this uh, white with a touch of yellow to understand where I want that horizon line to go. So I'm going to have it somewhere in through here and then just kind of uh, blend it out like that and I can bring it down over in through here. So that's going to be kind of the lightest area of the um, of this base coat that we're doing. Now I'm going to start picking up a little bit more yellow with a touch of white. So my quantity of yellow is more than my white. And I'm going to start moving my way outwards into the sky. So I'm using kind of a um, circular type of brush stroke. You could really um, be using a left to right brush stroke at this point if you wanted to. We'll be, we'll be doing another layer later that's going to help to um, get this to be more intense and soft looking, but this will just get us started. So I'm going to bring this maybe almost up to the top in through here and maybe a little bit over to this right hand side. So again, I'm still more yellow, touch of white, but not a lot of paint on my brush. So once I brought it about here, now I can start in introducing maybe some burnt sienna colors. So I'm going to go uh, yellow with a touch of white, just a touch and a touch of burnt sienna, all on my brush at the same time. And this is gonna start my sunset colors. I don't really need a ton of, this could either be the clouds going by, it could be the atmosphere, whatever you imagine it to be. Um, I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of my burnt sienna plus a tiny touch of white and a tiny touch of yellow. I'm gonna bring this color down in this vicinity as well. And if you have, you know, one time you pick up a little bit more burnt sienna than you had intended or more yellow than you had intended, it's okay, just let it happen. I'm gonna get this to kind of overlap or blend in with those yellowy sections. And again, just understand that this is just the, the base coat for here. Maybe you wanna add a little bit more yellow and white to it. You can really just, you know, advance this in whatever vibrancy that you want. Once I get over to this right hand kind of corner, this is where I'm gonna start including some of that lavender color. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of that lavender with a teeny bit of burnt sienna. So it's the lavender and burnt sienna. And I can start introducing this up in this left hand corner. I think I want more of the the lavender. And again, I'm using kind of these circular type of brush strokes in order to give it almost like a drifting cloud 
type of appearance, but you of course could use any uh, brush stroke that you want. That's looking pretty good. I want it to blend just a little bit more with this area in through here, so I think I'm gonna pick up a touch of burnt sienna and a touch of white on my dirty brush. So I did not wash my brush at all through this, um, this layer. If you are going about yours and you feel like your brush is a little bit overloaded, you, sh you certainly could wash your brush, but just know that we do also have another step to this sky. So if your sky isn't perfect at this point, don't worry about it. If it's like even my sky over here has a little bit of streaking in it, which I will modify and um, get to do what I want later. <laughs> this is just the first coat to kind of lay down my idea of where I want my colors and stuff. Down on the ground and through here, I'm gonna just pick up a little bit of that lavender to start on my dirty brush to start my horizon. So something like this. And this is not a an ocean horizon, so the horizon line does not have to be super straight. Um, and I'm letting it uh, blend in a little bit with those sky colors. So I just let it soften right into that. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my burnt sienna and a touch of yellow. So on my dirty brush, burnt sienna and yellow. And again, just allow, I'm just using a left to right crisscross type of brush stroke to um, get this ground on. And this again is the land portion. And once I get about halfway down my land, I can start incorporating a little bit of brown. So I'm going burnt sienna, yellow, and a touch of brown. So about equal parts of these three colors, maybe touch more, burnt sienna. Um, and this is gonna give me a little bit deeper tone down at the bottom where it's going to be intermingling with some longer grass. You can, of course, kind of alternate the colors if you want to. So it's not just one solid color that will give you some great dimension. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm not over painting it. And what I mean by that is I'm not um, over blending these colors. I'm just allowing them to kind of sit. Uh, they, they're blended a little bit, but there's you can still distinctly see that there's different colors in there. And then once we've got this done, we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so you can wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the sky. I do recommend before you start the step that your sky is dry. It will be definitely easier to do it that way. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint. The colors I'm gonna use are white, yellow, burnt sienna, lavender, and I might use a touch of red too. So if I do, I'll let you know. So I'm in essence gonna be going back over my sky with a similar process only this time I'm concentrating more on making it really nice and soft, like there's some drifting clouds. I wanna amp up the contrast on my sun versus the sky next to it so my sun becomes brighter. So that in essence means I'll make my sky a little bit richer in tones around that sun and make a bright yellow high, uh, like glow right around it. Again, I'm gonna be using very minimal amount of paint on my brush, um, and I'm just going for some nice drifty clouds and some nice savanna, Sahara, Sahara sunset kind of sky. So I'm gonna start back in my sun area. I'm gonna pick up a touch of white just to make sure that I have this area as white as I can get it, and it was right on top of white canvas, so it probably can't get any whiter than that. <laughs> And then I'm gonna pick up a touch of yellow. So I do have a little bit of my remnants of the white on my brush, which is okay. And then I'm just gonna kind of give myself this brighter kind of glow around that moon, I mean that sun. And you could certainly have yours um, with soft edges, which is kind of what I'm doing right now. So the edges to the sun are not super crisp. I have them kind of fading into that um, that brighter yellow next to it. Uh, that's gonna be a personal preference on your part. You can have it really um, crisp or you can have it on the softer side, whatever works for you. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of my um, deep yellow as I'm gonna go to this left-hand side. 
and you can see it's going to make that sun look much brighter. I feel like I wanted this left side to be a little bit darker than I had it, so what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm making this side a little bit darker with my yellow, but I'm also going to be adding some burnt sienna on top of it in a minute. Um, I feel as if this could have gone a little bit darker as well, so just kind of whatever that deep yellow is on my brush, I'm amping that up. So now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of burnt sienna, and again, I want to keep showing you my brush to it, explain and send home the point that it's very little bit of paint. So I can use this to tone this yellow that I just put on here and make it kind of a rusty type of color. Again, I'm just allowing for it to blend in with that yellow that I had just put on there. So I'm using a rubbing or a scrubbing type of um, brush stroke. I'm gonna put some over here too. So a little bit of burnt sienna um, is I'm gonna put over in this vicinity. I'm working, I guess, down towards that horizon line first and then I'll work my way up, I guess. <laughs> I think I wanna pick up a little bit more yellow. And if you feel as if, as you're going through these, that, like, I feel like that's almost too bold. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white. The white's gonna to help to soften those colors. So if you're going through it and you're thinking, oh, the, the, um, the saturation is too much, you can add just a tiny bit of white paint to, um, to the, the mixture on your canvas, and that's gonna help to soften it and get it to um, look more like a, uh, a, a soft is the best word I can use for it, a soft color as opposed to that rich, um, saturated tone. I'm digging that. That looks nice around the, the sun, making sure that looks round. So I'm just using the remnants on my brush to, if I feel that that circle uh, doesn't look like a circle. I also feel like this should be just a tiny bit lighter right here at the horizon, so I just picked up a tiny bit of white um, to lighten up just at the horizon line, something like this. So for me, when I'm looking at sunsets, I feel as if the that sun is illuminating the, the um, sky near the, um, or lightening up the sky right near the horizon. So that's where I'm adding just this little additional lightness right right near the sun at that horizon. So that looks good. Now I'm gonna work my way away. Um, and again, these tones as you work your way away from the sun can be kind of whatever you want. You can have drifting clouds go by, which I've got some lighter areas in through here. I think I'm gonna make these kind of peekaboo spots in the sky, and then I'm gonna use these purpley tones, purple and um, burnt sienna as kind of drifting clouds going by. So wherever I'm gonna have these peekaboo spots, I'm picking up a little bit more um, yellow and white just to make sure that um, I've got them painted in as much as I want. So there's, I've, there's a couple of dry spots or spots that are not fully painted for me, so I'm gonna just make sure that I've got those in place before, or and finished, um, fully executed before I move on. That looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit more up in through here, and you can add additional little light spots if you want, wherever you wanna put some light little peekaboo spots in that sky is totally up to you. I'm just kinda going with mostly areas that had already had that lightness to them from my first round. And then I think I want most of this to just be kind of these drifting clouds coming by. So I'm gonna use that to my advantage. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my burnt sienna, yellow and white. So a uh, burnt sienna, yellow and white to just kind of um, put my second coat on over here and through here. And again, there's gonna be, um, for me on this, there's gonna be a big rock in this area, so I don't need that area to be perfect, but I did want it to have its second coat. So burnt sienna yellow and uh, a little bit of white. So I'm now watching um, where I have these dark areas. And wherever I have these little dark areas, I'm gonna make them into little drifting clouds. <laughs> so I'm using my, um, 
burnt sienna yellow and white on my brush right now to start these little clouds and I'm also going to in a minute incorporate some of my my lavender to it so again these can be in any kind of formation that you want this is going to be up to you if you want to just make it really the whole thing a soft um, sunsetty sky it doesn't even have to have clouds coming by that's just something that I want to do um, but you could certainly make yours into whatever you want to do so I feel like I've got kind of a dark spot in here so I feel as if I could make that into some little clouds and again just having fun with this allowing these um, this burnt sienna it's mostly burnt sienna but I am using a little bit of yellow and white on my brush so these colors can kind of talk to each other. I've got this little area in through here that maybe I put a little little drifty cloud going in through here and I'm leaving soft edges on my clouds so they just look like little fluffy drifting kind of clouds. You can make little tiny marks in through here. These will make it look like there's a whole bunch of little clouds in that sky. I definitely need more burnt sienna up in through here as well so I'm gonna pick up more burnt sienna with a tiny touch of my yellow and a tiny touch of my white just an itty bitty bit of the yellow and the white and again just using this to make sure that this area is nice and soft um, and I am gonna incorporate that lavender as well but I just want wanted some more of that um, burnt sienna to kind of uh, put those nice sunset colors in this area. So now I'm going to pick up a little bit of my lavender and put some of that up in through here. A little bit more of that lavender. And if you're going through this and you're saying, mm, I, I like the lavender, but I feel I want it a little bit more purple, you can always pick up, I didn't say I was using this, but you can pick up the um, purple violet. So that's going to be the darker tone of purple. And you can certainly incorporate that wherever you want. But I'd be cautious about that because you could really um, turn this super dark if, um, if you're not careful. And this is also where you could incorporate touches of red so if the burnt sienna is not sunsetty enough for you you can certainly incorporate little touches of the red and I'll show you how to do that in a second but right now I'm excited about this purple so, <laughs> or this lavender so I'm just gonna put some in these little clouds going by here and you can incorporate it wherever you want I'm just kind of softening in it with these guys in through here I think that that looks pretty good and my goal is just to make it look soft so if I if I feel I need it to go any softer I can even add a teeny touch of white paint as well and that's probably too much <laughs> very cautious with the white and just kind of add these little almost kind of gentle fluffs throughout that so if I did want um, yeah, pick up my paper towel if I did want this to be a little bit more reddish I could pick up a teeny tiny bit of red I mean just a teeny tiny bit just itty bitty bit and you can incorporate that wherever you want you can have those deeper tones with the red you can use it with the burnt sienna whatever you feel would um, benefit you to advance your little cloud making feel free to do it and then you just fiddle so once you've got everything where you feel it is looking good you can use the all of those colors to just hit any modify anything so if i'm i'm looking at it and saying well my edges aren't as nice as i wanted them here i can just pick up a teeny bit more paint and just kind of extend maybe this little cloud in through here at you can use the lavender tones you can use the burnt sienna whatever works for you is is up to you and then once you've got it in a place that is visually appealing to you we are going to be using our drawing utensil for the next step so you can i'm digging this maybe just a little bit more burnt sienna up and through here um so you can well oh, now i'm now i'm not gonna be able to stop my sky <laughs> once you've got this far you can i just keep picking up burnt sienna now i'm like i'm digging it with this uh intermingling with this purple back this lavender color back here once you've got this done you can wash or put this brush away take out something to draw with and get ready for the next step 
All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be drawing an outline for our rocks and our lion. I'm going to be using my white piece of chalk to draw, but you could certainly use any drawing utensil that works for you. I'm going to be guiding you through a series of markers. We're going to connect those markers. By the time we're done, we'll have something that is really well balanced. We'll have our line put in a good position and hopefully he'll be in some good proportions. We're not doing any fine tuned detail right now. I just want to get the, the objects in place um, so we can utilize that um, placement for our painting process. And if we need to make any adjustments, that's where the chalk is for, <laughs> so you can erase it if you need to. So I'm gonna have you first find yourself the center of your canvas, top to bottom, left to right. So for me, the center of my canvas is somewhere in this vicinity. I like to give you that initial marker a lot of the time because it just helps us visually cut our canvas in quarters. So I know over here's the, the right half, the left half, the top, and the bottom, and it makes it easier for me to show you where things are in relationship with other things when we're kind of segregating those sections smaller. So once I've got that in place, then what I can do is I can come straight down to the bottom of my canvas, which is somewhere in through here, the center, and I'm going to go over to the left about maybe one, two, two and a half inches. I'm going to make my first little rock. So I'm just going to make a little um, kind of odd partial <laughs> half circle, and then I'm going to make another rock coming. Um, if I come over to the left hand side, if I come in about two inches. That's I'm going to start it kind of right next to this one. I'm going to bring the height of this rock about halfway between the bottom of my canvas and the and my horizon line, so somewhere in through here. That'll give you a good um, kind of barrier for it. And then you just make as, as freestyle of a kind of rock shape as you want to. And then I'm going to make another little one over here in the bottom left-hand corner, something like that. And don't worry about the shapes being perfect right now. This is just going to give you a guide for the painting process. So then we're going to put our big rock on. Now I'm going to guide you into especially the top placement of this rock so we have enough space for our lion. So if, if you find yourself um, back at the center of your canvas and then come over to the right about two inches, that's like the, the tippy point of the rock. And then if you come about halfway between that and the end of the canvas, so somewhere in maybe about this vicinity, if you go up about a half of an inch to an inch, that's about as high as I'm putting my rock. So that way that'll give us a, enough room to put the lion above. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to come up about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch, half, half an inch, three quarters of an inch. And then I can come over to the right at the halfway mark and then go down just a little bit. So somewhere in through here. So I've made myself one, two, three, four markers. And now I can connect them in whatever kind of rock shape that I want. So this will be on the ground, which is going to be um, hidden by some grass. Right about here, I'm going to start kind of going in an upward motion, maybe put almost a little flat face in through here. So that'll look almost like a like it's a cliff kind of thing. And then from here, again, you can really have whatever type of shape that you want for this. Um, I know that I'm gonna want my my lion feet to, to be on here as well. So the top profile is gonna be kind of disguised or um, the attention is gonna be more on the lion. So that's gonna be my, my rock shape. So now I'm going to guide you into some circles to start our lion. So if I find myself um, back at this marker that we made, this was about the quarter way marker and it was up a little bit from the halfway point. I'm going to go from there. I'm going to go up about an inch to an inch and a quarter, somewhere in through here. That's going to be the bottom belly of the lion. And then I'm going to go to the right of that about a half of an inch and up just a touch. So just a little tiny bit up. This is going to be the start of my first circle. This circle that I'm making is going to be about an inch and a quarter tall, inch and a quarter wide. So I can make four markers that are about an inch and a quarter away from each other and then just connect 
those into a circular type of a shape. And again, know that this is just starting. I'm just giving you the, these shapes so we can get a pretty good proportion on the line. Um, but again, they don't have to be perfect. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a circle that's going to start the head. This was an inch and a quarter. My one for the head is going to be about an inch and a half the circle size and it's going to be really close to the top of my canvas and um, if I go from here over to the left about an uh, inch and then up about an inch that's going to give me the right side of that circle and then to the left about an inch and a half and then again top and bottom about an inch and a half that'll give me my next circle so this one should be just a little bit larger than this one. So now that I've got these two circles in place, I can give myself the, the shape of the body. So I'm going to come down this one just a little bit, and I'm going to dip it for the back, and it's going to come up the back side of the head, like this, and then like that. I'm going to start right in through here. This is going to be dropped for the belly, and it's going to come up into where the muzzle is. So I'm going to go down like this, and just a curved line, bring it back up into that muzzle area. And this could be, doesn't matter if that's perfect or not. I'm going to put, I'm going to bump out a little bit of the top left portion of this bigger circle to account for where the top of the forehead of the lion is. So something like that is going to bump that out. And then I'm going to bump out where the muzzle is going to go. So about halfway down this circle, I'm just going to bring it to the left a little bit and then give myself this kind of little shape in through here. And again, doesn't have to be perfect right now. We will make it much more perfect during the painting process. So now I need to put some legs on. So again, I don't need a lot of detail on these legs, but just so we have an understanding of where they're going to go. Again, if you find yourself this little first marker that we made on that the bottom of the belly, if you go to the left about a quarter of an inch, and then go another quarter of an inch over, and then just bring this kind of down in a, it gets a little bit more narrow at that um, foot. And then I'm going to do one right next to it. This is going to be the front leg and just a little foot like that. Um, I do want to kind of puff out this chest a little bit in through here. So I'm going to just bring a little extra marker down like that. That's going to give me a little bit more for the, the chest itself and then I need the back legs. So I'm going to give us the leg closest to us on our side of the line first, which is going to be right in this meeting point of this circle and the belly. So somewhere in through there, I'm going to um, bring this down like to the right a little bit and then straight down with a little bump for the foot. And then from this butt part, I'm going to bring this like this. There's like a little joint in through here back down here and that's going to be um, the that's going to be the back of the foot and then the other leg is going to be right next to it so a similar kind of profile like this and a little foot and then just a little line and through that again we'll make it better but when, when we go to paint it's tough to do it with with chalk to make all these little details and then I'm just going to give myself a little marker where I want that tail to go. And that's all I'm going to be doing for my outline. You can certainly make any little fiddling adjustments that you want. We're going to be using our large brush and our number four round brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your drawing utensil away, take out those other two brushes, and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are going to be painting the base coat of our rocks and our lion. I'm going to be using both my large bristle brush as well as my medium round, the number four round, to paint the colors I'm going to be using are black, white, brown, and burnt sienna. I'm going to be making two custom colors. I'm going to make a dark gray and a lion brown. <laughs> so I have pre-mixed them on my palette so you can see where I'm headed. This is going to be my dark gray color in through here. How I achieved this is a bunch of black. I also used a little bit of brown because I like my grays to be on the warmer side and just a teeny touch of white paint. So this is going to be my rock 
gray that I'm going to be using, or we're just going to call it dark gray, but it'll be used as the base coat for the rocks. So my Lion Brown is pretty similar to my Burnt Umber, so of course I used a lot of Burnt Umber in this color combination. It's right here. But my Burnt Umber is very transparent, and I, I wanted this, this fur to have a little bit more depth to it with with different tones in it. So what I've done with my Burnt Umber is I added a touch of Burnt Sienna, a teeny touch of black, and a teeny touch of white. So what I've done is I've, I'm not altering it much. Think of it almost like, um, almost like a milk chocolate kind of color. I think I want more, a touch more black in that. Um, kind of like a milk chocolate type of a color. I, again, I'm, I'm doing it because I feel as if my burnt umber is going to be too transparent and um, just too much. I want it kind of softer and uh, allowing for some more rich tones or more dimension in the tone. So that's where I'm headed with my, with my lion brown. So once I've got that, I'm going to put my, or I'm going to wash my, my mixing tool because I might use that for the rocks, um, the smaller ones. And then I'm going to start by painting my large rock with my big brush. And this is going to be with my dark gray. So again, I know that I'm going to have my feet of my lion coming into, into play in a little bit. But right now I'm just more concerned about giving myself some kind of edge to my rock. So I am pushing my brush towards the, um, towards the outside edge of the rock. So this is allowing me to get a pretty crisp line on that outside. I'm doing it with some bumps, some lumps and bumps. So it looks like it's a, it's a little bit of a jagged rock. Uh, you could certainly use your, um, the number four to get this outside, the number four round brush to get the outside edge. Um, but I knew that this inside was going to be pretty a pretty large area, so it benefited me to just kind of pick the large brush to do this. But again, I'm just kind of pushing my brush towards the exterior edge of that rock in order to give me a pretty crisp line. And it's okay if you still see some of your outline. For me, I'm just using chalk, so that's going to erase easily. And for me, I also have a tendency to paint outside of my lines if my lines are gone. So I don't mind having my, my uh, lines showing, especially in these early stages. And if your paint is streaky in this area, don't worry about it. We've got much more steps to go. And then these little guys over here, you could use your smaller brush if you wanted to, or you could use this brush, whatever um, works for you, just to get that base coat in there. And again, form these rocks however you want. The more um, organic looking they are, or the more unique kind of in shape that you have them, that'll make them look, to me, a little bit more realistic um, than if they were all very similar shapes. So that looks good. So now that I've got those done, I'm definitely not gonna be able to use that brush to paint my lion. So I've put the large brush away. I'm taking out my number four round, and this is where I'm gonna paint my base coat to the lion. So I'm going to um, kind of make sure that I have my profile and the outline the way that I want it. This is where I can manipulate a little bit of these lines. Like this to me looks, it's like it's a little bit too um, much of an angle. So I could take this and just drop this down more diagonal and I can take and I can maybe bump out that nose just a little bit more then um, the, the mouth part, and then just bring this back up. So you can certainly make any adjustments to that um, exterior shape of the line. Up here, this is gonna be all main. So if I'm on an area that I know is gonna have some fluffy fur, you can certainly just kind of tap your brush along those edges, and that'll give a, you the beginning stage of um, of some texture. I don't need to know where any of these guidelines are at this point because those were just guidelines to help you um, draw the exterior shape. I will help guide you through um, the the other details of the of the lion um, 
the highlights and the shadows, creating the form and contours and stuff later. This is just, again, getting us that outline shape. The only part that I would recommend maybe um, kind of understanding what's happening is these two legs right in through here. Um, th this one is the leg that's on our side of the body. So you could just paint over that guideline, but those two legs, they meet or they're overlapping each other. And that might get a little bit confusing when you go to paint. So if you can leave a touch of that um, outline visible for yourself, that might help you um, during, the, during the painting process. And this foot is in front of the other one. So I'm just gonna make sure that I have that visible. So when I go to, so if I'm doing the belly in through here, I can just kind of paint that belly and then this back leg here maybe this is where i leave a little bit of that um outline i think i need this little back joint like i have on that one i need one on this guy too so just bending that out so the back legs should look pretty similar to each other by the time you're done <laughs> just that profile of them should be kind of similar i mean here the they it could be definitely in a uh, the position of the feet and legs can be a little bit different from one another, but you don't want one leg way skinnier than the other one. And then this is going to be um, the back leg or the one on the other side of the body. So again, just kind of a little bit more narrow towards that, towards the ankle part on these front legs. And then on this side too, uh, this is going to be the front leg. And this is, this is going to have a little bit of the... Um, the chest fur is gonna be overlapping this leg a little bit. So this little bump out here is gonna be the chest fur. And then I just have that little tail to mark up where I want it. Um, I think I have the tail maybe coming out a little bit too low. It, you're gonna want it to come out a little bit higher up that butt. So I don't think it should be coming out the bottom. It should be coming out a little bit higher. So I'm gonna on the fly here, make mine just a little bit higher, coming out like that, and then just dropping it down like this. And then it puffs out just a little bit at the at that uh, tip of the tail, something like that. That looks good. And then we're gonna be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put uh, this round brush away take out the large bristle brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the ground. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint. The colors I'm gonna use are my lavender, white, yellow, burnt sienna, and brown. And I might use a little black as well. So I know that my rocks are not done yet, but I did want them in place one, so I didn't overpaint, and two, so I can get some um, grassy stuff in front of um, the bottoms of them. We will be finishing the rocks in a future step. So just know, as you're going through this process of finishing the ground, if you bump into your rocks, don't worry about it, because we can fix them later. So I want this to look um, just hot and hazy <laughs> and have some... Uh, kind of dried grass. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using that lavender color up in the horizon to make that land look like it's going off into the distance. And then I'm gonna be using a dotting or stippling brush stroke to get the distant grass in there. I'm gonna be using a combination of my burnt sienna and my yellow, white to do that. And then as I come down towards the bottom of the canvas, I'm gonna be pulling up my brush a little bit more so you can see longer pieces of grass. So it'll bring it into the foreground. So I'm gonna start back up at the top of my horizon line. And again, just know that in this step, again, the, the trick is to not have a lot of paint on your brush. So just a little bit of paint on your brush is gonna, is gonna work out. So I just put a tiny bit of my lavender on my brush. I'm going back up to that that horizon line and just doing another coat 
and I'm softly just going back and forth so it kind of blends into the um, into the atmosphere. I guess I should probably get rid of that X in the middle of my canvas at some point too. Um, the, so this just kind of blends right into that that distant um, horizon line. You could, if you wanted to, pick up a tiny bit of burnt sienna and you could um, put a little bit of this at some at some of the the tippy tops of that horizon line. That'll make it look like it's a little bit extra glowy. Maybe there's a little piece of land back there. So feel free with kind of altering that as much as you want. So once I've got that on there, I'm now moving into the land itself. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of burnt sienna and brown uh, just on the tip of my brush. And this is where I'm just going to start to dot or dab the tip of my brush. So it's important to note, again, I, I don't have a ton of paint on my brush. This is really just um, teeny tiny dots that are going to make that grass look like it's off in the distance. So I, if I was to um, be using a lot of paint on my brush, that would make me over blend and it would make it look too soft and that there wouldn't be any texture in it. If I want some darker areas, I can just pick up a tiny bit more of my brown color. Maybe I have some little deeper, darker areas in through here. Maybe I've got, you know, I can come into the middle of the, the land in through here. Maybe you even have a couple of little darker notes throughout the, you know, maybe there's little bushes and stuff that create these little darker marks. I'm going to utilize that light yellow that I have in there um, to get some glow happening in my grass. So I just wiped my brush off of my paper towel so I didn't have too much paint on there. Now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of burnt sienna and yellow. So little tiny bit of both. And again, I'm still just kind of dabbing, dotting throughout this area. Just really looking to make it look like I've got a second coat of paint on in here. I don't need to do anything fancy. Just for me, I just want to enhance that that um, kind of visual effect. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of yellow and white. And again, I keep showing you my brush so you understand that I'm really just using a teeny tiny bit. My sun is here. So it would make sense if I had some um, more glowy kind of grass in through here. So just itty bitty bit on the tip of my brush allowing for maybe some little extra light stuff in through here. And then once I've got that established, I feel like it's pretty, you know, good. I didn't really need to do too much more in through there. As I'm coming down in through here, this is where I'm going to start to do a little bit more texture. So I'm picking up a little bit more burnt sienna and brown. And instead of dotting, I'm going to transition into kind of pulling my brush up just kind of tapping and pulling it up. And this is going to give me texture in the grass that's going to make it look like it is getting closer and closer to us. And I can just kind of pull that up. And as I get down towards the bottom of the canvas, I can make it even taller. I don't need it super tall because uh, my my lion is the the closest to us, which would be the this rock in through here. And I mean, I know that this this type of grass can be kind of long, but I don't necessarily need it to be super duper long. Um, I just picked up a little bit more burnt sienna and brown to give myself a little bit more bits and pieces in through here. This is where we're and I'm hitting the rock. It's okay. I'm going to now pick up a tiny bit of yellow and white, just an itty bitty bit, and give myself just these additional kind of twinkles on the grass and the, the yellow and the white is what's going to show the glow at the tips of the grass. So if you're going through this and you're saying, oh, it looks kind of all one note, I'm not seeing the dimension, it's because you probably need a little bit of highlights on the tips of those pieces of grass in order to, in order for them, I've got to move this thing right here, in order for them to um, show on top of each other. So again, just little bits of the yellow and white can help you get that um, that more um, visual type of um, texture within the grass. And if you make it go too light, you can always come back 
with some of the burnt sienna and the and the brown but the the you have to have that texture or that contrast in the colors in order to be able to see um, to see that that textural element if you if it's just all kind of one note it begins to be a little bit too difficult to see I'm picking up a little bit more yellow and burnt sienna to uh, I feel like a couple of these were a bit too white so we're just kind of toning them down with that and uh, in behind this rock I'm picking up burnt sienna yellow and a bit and a bit of white and I'm just going to kind of pull up these little pieces right around the bottom I might I actually feel like I want to go darker over here too because this is behind that rock I'm, this is where I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black so again teeny tiny bit kind of hide the bottom of this rock shadow it as if the rock is hitting putting some shadow be on that ground there we go that looks good and then I would just kind of fiddle with it you might find that you love it the way that it is you might find that you want to add a little bit more texture more whatever so whatever you feel would um, would benefit your your visual story you can certainly just kind of keep adding those little longer pieces of grass towards the bottom shorter pieces of grass up towards the top and then once you've got it done uh, we're going to be using our, I think we're going to use our mm, number four uh, round brush and probably our, um, our large bristle brush for the next step. I'm just adding a little bit more of my burnt sand into the grass because I'm feeling like it deserves it. And then you can put this brush away or wash this brush, take this brush and the little or the number four round out and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some trees. I'm gonna be using both my large bristle brush as well as my number four round. You could certainly use, um, when we do the little branches, you could of course use your smaller um, detail brush as well. I'm, the colors I'm gonna be using are black, red, yellow, uh, maybe a little bit of white and a little bit of burnt sienna as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first put them in place with just black and then I'm going to add some little highlights and stuff. Or maybe the leaves. I might I might build the leaves with the uh, with red and burnt sienna first and then put the black on top. But we're going to do tree trunks and branches first. So I'm going to be using um, this number four round with black with a little bit of water in the in my bristles so that is going to allow me to get these really skinny lines I'm gonna have one tree right in front of my um, Sun right in through here and it's gonna just kind of meet my ground I'm also gonna have a elephant that's gonna be in front of the bottom of this tree so I'm not terribly concerned about making it um, the bottom perfect uh, these trees they kind of have a trunk and then their their branches splay out and the tops of them can kind of be on the flatter side so as I am building my branches I know that I want them to be thicker where they um, meet this trunk area but um, when I go to make them branch out I kind of for me I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a marker here I only kind of want mine to go that high. So that will give you a, an understanding of um, kind of where where they're gonna sit. You can have them, um, well that one's gonna get an extra one right here right now because my brush just got away from me. Um, you can have them be uh, on the straighter side. You can have them more crooked. Um, I saw them a bunch of different ways. So as you're building yours, just I think one of the iconic things I was seeing was that kind of flat top to the trees. But there's different varieties of these trees as well. So as you're building yours, again, it doesn't need to be exactly as mine. Um, but you can have like these branches that kind of are jagged looking. Um, 
They can, of course, cross over one another, and you can have them coming out. Um, but like any tree, the branches are typically going to be wider or thicker um, where they meet that trunk. So as you're building yours, just, you know, if you keep that little thought process in mind, that's going to allow you to um, kind of get them to be a little bit more natural. And when I go towards those little tiny branches off at the, at the tippy ends, I'm not using as much pressure on my, on my brush. So that's um, something that I definitely am mindful of and I try and um, emulate that and uh, with l very little bit of pressure on my brush. So the I'm putting a lot more little branches up towards the top where it's going to meet the um, the little fluffy part of the tree. But you could certainly feel free to make yours in any in any way that you want. I'm just kind of putting as many little tiny um, branches as I can kind of fit in here. And of course, the more uh, little tiny branches that you have, the more it's going to, I think, look natural. I, whenever I'm looking at trees, they always seem to have millions of branches. There's never, there's never just like seven branches. There's always a million branches on any, every kind of tree has their own, um, their own little uh, nuances to it too. So just, you know, have fun with that. We'll put the um, little bits of um, leaves on it in a minute because I want to put two other um, little trees. Maybe one is coming off the side of my canvas in through here and maybe this is this one's got um, some branches that maybe come out in through here and of course the top of this one I'm going to have uh, maybe somewhere just about this height but of course you can have yours wherever you want and then I'll put a little um, just kind of put little tiny little branches in through here so when I put my leaves on it it'll make sense and then up here I want there just to be the essence of maybe there's a tree really close to us and we're just seeing um, the top portion maybe it's off the off in the distance but or off the, the canvas but closer to us so I'm gonna put um, kind of a bigger branch in through here and then we'll just put some leaves on top of it. So this is a great way to just increase the um, dimensional element of the painting. You can add more dimension by putting more things in the foreground. So I'm putting this little um, portion of the tree in the foreground because, and I know that because it's bigger, the branches are bigger than that one, so it tells me that it's closer to us. Um, I do want some of these uh, little leaves to kind of go out maybe overhanging that one a little bit so I'm just putting some more little branches in through here um, so once I've got these so I was saying that that that's a great way to just increase the um, the depth in your painting too is to add more stuff in the foreground versus far away if you can if you can balance those two um, those two aspects, you're going to be able to get some great dimension in it. So I'm, while those are drying, while the branches are drying, branches and trunks are drying, I'm just going to wash and dry that number four round. I'm going to take out my large bristle, and this is where I'm going to add my leaves onto it. So I wanted to have a glow from the sun behind it, so I think I'm going to start with a tiny bit of red and burnt sienna. So again, just an itty bitty bit of both of those colors on my brush because I, I want it to just dry pretty fast and I'm going to allow myself to kind of tap in where I'm going to want these leaves to go. So this, these trees have kind of these bunches of leaves um, that are, the height is narrow but the width is wide of the splay of these um, these leaves, so it's kind of cool. They've got their own little identity. So as I as I'm doing this, that's what I'm thinking in my head. I'm thinking, okay, well, I've got this kind of footprint of maybe a little couple of little clusters, maybe a couple of little clusters in through here, and I'm making this footprint with the red and the burnt sienna a little bit larger than I'm going to want my actual um, final 
display of leaves because this is going to act as the glow around the edges. So again, just a tiny bit of red and burnt sienna and maybe just little little bits in this guy over here, something like this. And of course, your trees can be way different than mine. They don't have to be exactly as mine. I'm just kind of having fun here. Maybe this one's got some on this guy in through here. They can have side branches. They can have Again, we're just kind of seeing the top of this one in through here, so this one is definitely, this uh, top one is definitely a, a fun one. And then, I, so I'm using the narrow side of my brush as opposed to the height side. So that's going to, that's giving me a smaller um, area that these bristles are touching. So that's good in through there. Um, I think that looks good. I'm going to now pick up a tiny bit of black paint on my dirty brush because the black is going to overpower that burnt sienna and and rust anyways or burnt sienna and and red and then when i go to dab these little leaves in here i'm going to leave a little bit of that reddish tone on the outside on the the around the edges so this is going to have create like a glow around these leaves uh, you could have done it reverse you could have done the black first and then put the red around the edges. And if you go through this and you, you overdid your black, you can certainly come back through with a touch of um, the red and the burnt sienna in order to, to do that same effect. So you can have fun with, um, with creating that. Or if you, like me, and just want some extra areas, you can certainly add some extra areas. Um, and then in through here. And again, I, I hardly have any paint on my brush. And as you go through this process, you might want more, you might want less. Uh, that's going to be totally up to you. And if this brush is too big for you to do this particular step with, you can certainly switch to that number four round to just dot in these little tiny leaves. You don't need to use this brush as much as I do. You, you know, I'm very comfortable with the size of it, but if you're just starting out and this brush becomes a little bit too large for you, you can certainly create the same effect with a smaller brush. Even the round brush can help you um, can create this type of effect. So that looks good. Now I want to add a little bit of glow to my trunks. So I'm putting my large bristle brush away, taking back out that number four round. And this is where I can use a touch of red and yellow to start on my brush and just add this glow onto the trunk and you can also pull it out the sides of the trunk just a little bit too. That's going to make it look like there's a little bit of a glow around the edge of the trunk and I'm going to do it just with red and yellow first and then if I'm um, comfortable with it I can um, touch a tiny bit of white in it as well um, but that's only if you are really comfortable with with what's happening and you're confident that you're not going to make it too too white um i don't think i would necessarily need too much over here but this is where if you're comfortable you can pick up just an itty bitty bit of white paint and you can even add just a little bit more of a glow you can even put a tiny bit of water on your brush and you can just kind of get this to just fade out into um, that atmosphere and it doesn't, it can go around the tree. It doesn't even have to um, stop at the tree. That glow can kind of emanate, emulate, emanate, emanate, emanate. <laughs> it can go out into the atmosphere around it and something like that. And then you just fiddle with it. You can put more of anything. You can put more burnt sienna around your leaves. You can put more glow, whatever, whatever you feel would work to enhance your trees, have at it. And then once you've got that done, you can, um, we're going to actually use our small brush for the next step. So actually I think I need a tiny bit of white. I made that go just a little bit too far. Um, so you can put this brush away, take out the small detail brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some small things. <laughs> so the small things are gonna include our elephants, our giraffes, and any other little stuff that we wanna put in the, 
in the landscape. So I might decide to put one of these big trees off in the distance. I might decide to put a little rock in the in the savanna grassland. So I might decide to put a couple of those things while I'm doing this step. So that's why I'm calling it the little things. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first start with my elephants and my giraffes. I'm really going for a very simplified approach to these because they're off in the distance. They're gonna be uh, pretty much uh, not 100% silhouetted, but definitely off in the distance. So no fine tuned detail. I'm gonna be using my dark gray, my lion brown, white, and maybe a little bit of burnt umber and yellow as well. And, if, uh, and maybe some burnt sienna. <laughs> I'll call the colors out as I use them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first put the shapes of my giraffes in and then we'll do our elephants. So I'm going to be using my um, my lion brown as my base coat for my giraffes. I'm going to do them in very simple um, shapes. So I'm going to do the body in kind of like a bean type of a shape. Just super small. The um, the portion of the body that meets the neck kind of goes up and the butt kind of sits down a little bit from um, the shoulder area. So if you want the, the back of the rear end to look more kind of like giraffe it kind of sits down a little bit. Then I'm going to put a big long neck on, something like this. And then the head is uh, just a small kind of circle that sits at the top of the neck and then a little tiny um, mark down where the mouth is and then you can put your little ears on little ear ear or those are horns and an ear out the side so that's a real generic shape i'm going to put um, some legs hiding in the grass so um, i'm just going to kind of get them to disappear in my grass <laughs> something like that and that's going to be the start of my giraffes. So I'm going to go ahead and do another one and maybe maybe this one in through here the um, maybe its head is a little bit down tipped down a little bit more. Maybe he's walking a little bit um, more in stride than than this one over here. So I'm just having these guys kind of walking to the right. You could really have yours going in whatever direction that you want. <laughs> they could be coming right at the viewer. That's totally up to you. You could, once you kind of have the idea of the shape, um, you can certainly just Google giraffes and you can get a, a bunch of different positions that they're in. Once you kind of know the um, just the generic shape to them, it makes it really pretty simple to um, start modifying and adding um, details and putting them in different positions and things of that nature. Um, so don't feel that you have to, you know, do exactly as I'm doing. You might not even see both of those horns on there or that ear because of the position it's in. Um, so, you know, just having fun, especially on, on a painting like this that's pretty silhouetted. Um, I the pressure's off. Like, I don't, you know, if something goes wrong, I'm okay with that. Like, this chest might be a little bit bigger than it needs to be. I'm totally okay with that because the focus is, uh, in this particular painting, is more on um, my my lion and the, the scenery as opposed to these uh, individual small animals that I'm doing. I'm going to have one off in uh, the distance over here. I think I want this one a little bit um, closer to my horizon line. So I'm going to put this one kind of in here like this. And then I'm going to, this one's going in the other direction. So if you're, if you're going about it and you're saying, well, I put it way too far away from my, um, from my land, you can always bring the land up in those, uh, little areas. Like I'm going to put some grass around the the bottom of these guys so it looks like they are definitely in the grass um, 
so if you need to make your grass taller or, or whatever the case may be, that's totally fine. But remember, giraffes are super tall. They have long, they have super long legs. So you can really have fun with, you know, identifying whatever you want them. The neck gets a little bit wider as it meets the animal. And then this one I've got my head is going to kind of go out like this. And then just a little, a little muzzle area. And this one I'm going to have my little horns. I don't think I'm going to see the ears on that one. I think that looks good. And if you feel like you want to see the tail, you could certainly just, they just had these little tiny skinny tails coming out the back. That one I accidentally made one. <laughs> so that's going to be my base coat for my giraffes. For my, um, for my elephants, I'm going to use my dark gray. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm using my dark gray. My elephants, I'm going to do a circle for the body, a circle for the head, and then we'll put some legs and some ears on them. So I want one to disguise this, um, the bottom of this tree here. So I'm going to put a circle kind of right at the bottom of the tree, right in through here. And then I'm going to put a bigger circle as its back, but this is going to be a little bit lower and a little bit bigger. So again, I'm just seeing a side profile of my elephant. Um, and I'm going to have that belly drop just a little bit something like that and I'm going to put um, this, this is going to be part of the ear so I know that I'm going to have um, an ear on this one. I think I need to make this body bigger. We're going to go down a little bit farther. This, this elephant might be a little bit bigger than I had anticipated. <laughs> it's okay. We need a little leg coming out the back and again I'm hiding them in grass. Right in the front of that circle is where I'm going to put the front legs coming down. Um, I think this back leg might need to be a little wider. And then I'm going to put um, the trunk on. So just coming down this front like this and I'm going to just kind of wrap it around like that. So if you wanted like the bottom of an ear to show, I'm going to show you how to um, silhouette that so or put a little extra information so it looks a little bit um, more like an ear but that looks I think that looks pretty good um, so I have another one in through here I'm gonna do this one's gonna be a little bit different position I'm gonna do a circle in through here um, and we're just gonna see a little portion of the head so that's gonna it's a little bit turned a little bit more and then I'm gonna have um, the the back leg this one's gonna actually kind of go right behind that rock I'm gonna have a little front leg in through here and again, uh, proportion. So I think that belly needs to drop a little bit. Um, I could put a little tail on there if I wanted to. And then I've got my trunk. This trunk I'm just going to have hiding kind of in the grass. And then if I wanted a little bump up for the ear, I can do that. That looks good. And then I've got, um, I want to have another one here that we're just seeing the back of. So I'm just going to have a circle for um, the body, like the butt body part. And then I'm going to have two legs just kind of coming down, two wide legs because these are the back legs and we're just seeing them from the back. And then I'll put a couple of bump outs for the ears. So I'm just going to kind of bump that out like that. And then like that looks kind of like Mickey Mouse right now. <laughs> we'll put little highlights in them in a minute. Elephant ears are really big, so that looks pretty good. So while those are drying, now I'm going to decide: Do I want other little things in my in my savanna kind of desert? So I think I want a couple of rocks. So I just picked up some more of my dark uh, gray, and maybe I just kind of put a couple of little fun marks here and there, maybe off in the distance. If I want a couple of trees, I can just. I just picked up a little bit of water on my brush as well. So maybe I've got the silhouette of a couple of these um, similar trees. Again, I, it's not necessary to, to do these extra little um, steps, but if you want to advance that painting and, and bring that painting more into a, a one that looks like a lot of attention was paid to the detail, it's got, um, you know, the, 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 that depth perception in it. These are the type of things that can help you do that. So if I just add these little kind of um, faint 
trees that look similar to this, it's going to make them look like they're just off in the distance. Maybe they're catching a little bit of that, um, of that sunset glow. So I might add a touch of the, um, the burnt sienna to them, but right now just kind of putting that, um, that brown or the gray in them. And then maybe by my, by my elephant, I've got a little rock. So you can really just have fun. If you wanted more rocks down at the bottom, you could put another rock down in through here in between your grass. So again, any, you feel like you need any space fillers, you can certainly go about that in that kind of way. So now that that's done, I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put my little details on my giraffes. My sun is over there, but I do want them to feel kind of giraffey, so I want them to have some, some dots on them. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown and white, my burnt umber, to give myself um, some kind of just little polka dot type marks. If you felt that that wasn't, I might need a little bit more. I'm, I'm going in with a little bit of yellow too. Um, so I'm making like a little gold type of a color. Um, so this way... That was just too dull, um, so I can add just a, I used a little bit of um, yellow, brown, and white to create just a gold type of a color. This will give me just the illusion of some giraffe spots. Again, not necessary, but if you want to push it over the edge, something like that can help you along. And then um, I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt sienna to put a, another kind of color on, on my giraffes, a little bit of burnt sienna, just kind of streaking it in here and there, making sure that I've got a good coat. And now I can pick up a tiny bit of black to um, give myself uh, just the illusion of a shadowy side to them. So if you feel as if you might want a little more dimension over on this dark side, because we are on the dark side of the giraffe, you can just pull in a couple of dark marks and that's going to allow um, or give the illusion that we are on the shadowed side. You can also put um, some grass at the bottom. So if you need to hide those legs, um, burnt sienna yellow and white can just give you that finesse around those legs with some little pieces of grass. So burnt sienna yellow and white are on my brush at the same time and just making sure I've got those legs hidden or at the bottom like they're in that deep um, wild dried grass where all the lions hide <laughs> and, the, and the and the you know desert animals like to like to enjoy the day so something like that and of course if you needed any more you could certainly disguise it as much as you want to I think that looks pretty good. I don't really need to do too much more with them. And then the elephants, I'm gonna, uh, I wipe my brush off. I'm picking up some of my gray plus a touch of white. I'm gonna give like a little highlight on the back. So something like this is gonna tell the viewer that that's the, the brighter part, maybe a little bit on the face or even a, a little bit on the ear. So if I want there to be the illusion of, of the ear. I can just give these little these little um, cues to the viewer. I'll put some black um, in, on the shadow side as well, but right now just kind of adding a couple of little highlights to give the viewer the information. You know, maybe this one's got, maybe I see the ear on this one over on this side. So maybe we just have a little ear. Maybe we have a little bit a highlight there maybe there's a little highlight on the bomb towards that light source but just to give them a little bit more um, a little bit more substance this one I'm putting a little bit of highlight on the back so you can kind of see the shape of the back and then maybe a little touch on the edge of those ears maybe down this leg in through here and then I can pick up a tiny bit of black and give myself some little some little shadows maybe underneath that belly maybe underneath or behind an ear maybe right in in the eye area wherever you feel that you could get away with putting a a darker shadow maybe those legs are dark as they go down towards the ground maybe this one gets it between the legs here maybe a little bit behind those ears and then again I'm going to 
finish the grass. So if I have any um, burnt uh, any feet that need to be hidden, so burnt sienna, yellow, yellow and white just kind of disguising the bottom of those feet so or legs. So that way, again, it looks like it's deep in the grass. And of course, you can make yours as disguised as you want. If you need to, if you need more or less, just adjust it as you see, as, as you feel you need to. And then those little rocks, you can always use just a bit of brown and white and just give these little kind of just quick highlights on the tippy top as if they're being illuminated from the, the light source. And if you want any more grass, again, burnt sienna, yellow, and white can just put little grass blades around those tiny little rocks. We're gonna hit the bigger rocks um, on the next step, so don't don't worry about that. And then just fiddle with it as much as you as much as you feel you need to. And once you've got it in a place that is comfortable to you. We are going to be using um, our number four round for the next step. So you can put this small one away, take out the medium round, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the bigger rocks. I'm using my number four round. The colors I'm gonna use are black, gray, lavender, burnt sienna, Maybe, um, I might use a little red, I'm not quite sure, um, and a little yellow and white. I think I called them all out. <laughs> if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start with black, and I'm going to add some dark shadowy areas in the rocks, and then I'm going to build my way to the light, which will be uh, the lightest of the rocks is going to be in this area in through here but I do want to have some little highlights on the other ones in order to show the texture and the contour and stuff. So I'm going to start with some black paint and I'm going to put all my dark areas in place. So this will be, since the light source is over there, it's going to be on our side of the rocks and in the crevices of the rocks. So say for this this one in through here, if I want there to almost look like there's two rocks, I could put a little dark area towards the bottom for the shadow, and then I can pull these little um, additional marks of darkness in through there, and it could almost make it look like there's two rocks there. So this particular one in through here, I definitely need some dark stuff down at the bottom, so I'm just gonna kind of rub my brush down at the bottom of my canvas and then I'm gonna just uh, bring up some soft uh, lines so it's not, um, I'm almost blending it up into the gray in a chaotic kind of way. If I want there to be a couple of little divots in the top of the rock, I can take a little bit more black and just add these little um, dark crevices and of course you don't have to do it everywhere, just you know wherever you see fit. So that looks pretty good. This guy over here, he's a big one. I want to put a lot of darkness down in this bottom right. Um, so I'm gonna start with just black and just rub it in. I might put some additional pieces of grass in there too. I'm working around the grass, but I don't want it to look like I'm working around the grass. So I think I'm gonna actually just, uh, I'm putting a little bit of water on my brush. I'm gonna just kind of tap down into that grassy area so it looks like there's some little shadows in that in the grass as it's meeting the rock, something like that. There we go. And then coming up this side of the rock, I definitely want some shadows, but I want that edge to be pretty bright. So, and I want some little creases in my rock too. So I feel like I want to take it kind of and give um, the idea that it's in an upward kind of motion. So if I take and give this kind of jagged diagonal line like that, I can imply that um, the rock is going in an upward direction. These are going to be little shadows between parts of the rock that stick out. 
Um, and as I, as I build the rock a little bit more, like maybe this part is going to be overhanging that part. So I can use these, what's going to be um, these shadowy areas to build um, additional form and parts of the rock that, that pop out to the viewer a little bit more. So this will be a little piece that pops out, shadows in through there. Maybe I have some little, um, a little piece that pops out here. Maybe I have another little piece that pops out there. So you can really create a lot of um, dimension in rocks by just adding these little shadows in between the, the parts that, that jump or that bump out to the viewer. So maybe I've got this a little bit darker in through here. I'm going to pick up some of my gray now in order to just make sure I have this blended the way that I want. Uh, this guy in through here, I need to, I want to blend that out just a little bit more. So I just picked up a little bit more black. I'm going to have kind of a crease, if you will, in this rock in through here. There we go. That looks good. And I'm going to pick up more of my gray. And then once I've got it kind of in, in a pretty good form, the way that I, I, had envisioned it with where it was going to be nice and dark down at the bottom. I was going to have a couple of pieces um, jutting out a little bit. Now that I've got that in place, I can start to add my, my lighter tones in order to um, give it that additional form. But let me just kind of uh, put my second coat on up in through here. So I'm going to do that to my smaller rocks first so we can kind of get warmed up and then we'll come over to this guy, to the big rock. Yeah, that's looking good. So over in through here, I'm gonna be using my lavender um, with maybe a little bit of burnt sienna and white as my highlight colors. So I'm just, I didn't wash my brush, I just picked up a little bit of lavender and I can just kind of tap it along those edges that I want to be the brightest. So I don't necessarily want it to be the same color highlight everywhere because rocks are very different when it comes to their color variation. So I just picked up a bit of burnt sienna and my lavender for this little highlight in through here. So you can really just have fun with um, those different shades of your highlights. This is definitely where I would um, make sure that all my, my um, outlines are gone. So if you have any additional outlines that you need to take care of, now would be the time to do it. I'm keeping it pretty dark on this backside. So if I needed any additional paint as if it wasn't finished, I could just pick up my dark gray and finish that out. Same thing with this one over here. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of my lavender and my burnt sienna. Give myself just some little highlights along the edges and the lavender is awesome right now because it's it's such a contrasting color against your um your grass and stuff so you can use that to your advantage I, while i'm here i feel that this grass isn't good enough so i'm picking up a little bit of brown and burnt sienna just to um, put a couple more pieces of grass right in through here it feels like it's unfinished so we're finishing it now <laughs> But that's just a, a move that I needed to make while I was here before I forgot. There we go. Um, so those rocks look pretty good. This little guy in through here, um, actually I'm picking up a touch of black because I missed hitting him when I was hitting the other ones. So, and this little guy right here. And then I'm picking up a tiny bit of my lavender just to hit a couple of little bright spots along what would be the cresting pieces of the rock. So something like that, that looks good. And then on this guy, I'm picking up my lavender for my highlights over in through here, probably lavender plus my gray. And then as I go to the left side, I'm gonna have a kind of a um, a platform, which it's gonna look kind of flatter up at the top. So th that's where I'm gonna be using burnt sienna, yellow and white. So again, lavender is on my brush right now. So if I want there to be a pretty good um, light spot, I can put that lavender on and then just blend it out into um, into the gray. I'm going to use more, a little bit more lavender. Maybe I've got a spot that kind of 
pops out in through here. Maybe I've got a couple of little spots all over the place. Pick up a touch of my gray on my dirty brush. So this is going to give me different tones of this lighter version of gray. Now that I'm creating all these little pockets of um, parts of the rock that are sticking out a little bit more to the viewer. So something like that. You can even when it comes to like pieces in through here. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of uh, lavender and burnt sienna as I'm moving towards this left hand side. So if I want this to look like it's kind of um, an edge, I can make it pretty darn bright in through there and then um, pick up some of my gray and just get it to look as if just that left little side of the rock is catching the light from over there. So you can just play with those little values for an area such as that. Maybe I've got a couple of little areas down in through here that want to have a little bit more um, brightness to them. So I just picked up a little bit of my burnt sienna and my lavender. I'm moving more towards the burnt sienna now because I'm going towards the light source. So that's where um, I'm opting to use warmer colors because the sun is going to give you a warmer hue. Maybe in through here too, I go for uh, my burnt sienna with a touch of my lavender in through here. And then as I get towards the top of the rock, I'm going to, and that front little piece, just put my head back here, see if that's what I wanted to do. Yep. In through here, I'm going to be using burnt sienna yellow and white. So these are my grass colors and I can say, all right, I want a, a bright piece of the rock right in through here. So this is going to be right underneath my lion's feet. I want maybe this piece to be bright too. I'm watching those little dark marks that I made a minute ago and I'm kind of working around them with this lighter color. I don't want it to be a solid color because to me rocks aren't solid colors so I'm going to just wiggle my brush a little bit in order to give it some textural elements. You can pick up more burnt sienna in areas. You can pick up more yellow in areas. I want this little guy to be look like it's almost kind of a platform in through here. So that'll it kind of, maybe a little bit more black so this kind of dips down. And then I've got another little platform in through here. So again, just playing with those shadows can really um, help the viewer understand what's happening to to this rock or what pieces are are showing the most to the sun. So because I'm putting this little area lighter and brighter than this, it's going to tell them that this is on top. Um, so just those little those little things can help you along. And again, over in through here. These might be a little bit too yellow, so I'm going to just kind of ride with it for the moment and then I will adjust it. Um, sometimes it makes it easier for me to just, if, I, if I'm doing something and the color is not perfect, it, sometimes it just makes it easier for me to roll with that imperfect color instead of trying to panic and, and fix it right then and there because I know that I can always add additional tones on top of this that will make it um, look as I want it to look, um, so I never, I never panic. <laughs> so now I'm adding a little bit of burnt sienna and white onto my brush. I want to have a little extra brightness maybe on this piece in through here, a little bit of burnt sienna and white, and you probably are noticing I'm not pre-mixing a color for this rock simply because, again, I don't feel that rocks are one specific color um, and especially since they can be um, iridescent and taking on the colors of the atmosphere and shining the atmosphere colors on top of them so that's where I am just allowing for for those type of effects to to occur. I feel like I want this a little bit lighter. Mm, it's looking pretty good. Something like that and and if you can't see the edge around here I would recommend adding more lightness or something with that contrast. So I just added a, a bit more white onto my brush just to kind of amp up this contrast right in through here so it takes on more of that highlight from the sun um, and you could even do it 
down these little guys too if you wanted to. And then I would just at this point probably keep playing a little bit. Um, probably not too, too much, but I'm going to put a little bit more uh, dark gray on my brush. I feel like this might be a little bit too bright. And I just sit here and kind of adjust these tones as much as I feel I, I would need to in order to get it to look the way that I want. But I the, the my main focus is going to be... You know, this rock is definitely a focal point, um, but my lion is also a complementary focal point. So as you're going through this process, again, if it's not um, every tiny piece isn't exactly as you had anticipated it to be, it's okay because you can, you can change things as you go. You can morph them into something that looks a little bit different. So don't feel it has to look exactly like mine or don't feel it has to um, be, you know, the rock has to have every little perfect mark in, its, in each place. So once you've got this and you've got as much um, oomph on your rock as you want. We are going to be using this same brush, the number four round, for the next step. So you can wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what I'm going to do for the next step is I'm going to be painting, I'm going to call it the dark stuff <laughs> on the line. So I'm going to use my number four round brush. I might switch to my number one, but I'm, my intent is to use the number four, but if I have difficulty, I'll switch to the smaller brush. My colors I'm going to be using in this step are black, my lion brown, uh, white, and that might be it for this step. So what I'm going to do is I want to um, identify where the mane is going. I'm going to start my shadowy stuff underneath my um, my back legs and my belly. I'm going to um, put my, my tail, the tip of the tail is going to be really dark, so I'm going to put that in place. And I'm going to um, put an, another layer on the animal with that, um, with the lion, the lion brown, but I might... My main focus here is to get the the items separated and the dark stuff on there. I might even throw in just the little line for the mouth and the tip of the nose and the eye and we'll finesse it in a future step. So I'm going to start with some black paint and a little bit of water on my brush. So watered down black paint. I'm going to start in some easy spots like the tip of the tail and I'm just going to kind of um, put uh, just these little kind of streaks within that uh, that tail part, the, the little fluffy part. I'm going to put bring a little bit of darkness down the bottom side of the tail because it would be shadowed by the body itself. Um, I'm going to pick up a little bit more of black with a, some water on it. I'm going to go on the inside of this leg and through here to separate these two guys. And as I'm going down into the lighter area of the um, of the leg. This is where I'm going to wash, wipe my brush off, and pick up some of that original um, lion brown. And I can I can kind of just blend it down into that leg. So this is just going to give me a nice finished coat on here. I'm also going to use a little bit of black to um, separate my toes too. Uh, so or darker tones so I can separate those toes but right now just kind of getting these under shadows to the uh, to the animal I'm putting a little bit more black on my brush feel as though this leg should probably be a little bit wider in through there something like that there we go that looks pretty good and the, the, the light source is over here so the dark side is definitely also going to be on the right side of these, the legs that are on our side. <laughs> the dark side's on the right side of the legs that are on our side. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes my brain has fun. Um, so again, just using a little bit of darkness down these right side of these legs and through here. So just a little bit of watered down black is on my brush. Now I'm going to put a little bit more watered down black on my brush and do some little shadows underneath these feet 
and maybe just pull up these couple little marks um, to say, oh, there's a little toe and through there. Same thing over here. Going to just pull up maybe just a little, little tiny bump. And then this side is going to get quite a bit in through there. And then uh, this, this, um, the front legs have um, like a dew claw kind of coming out like a regular domestic cat. So I'm going to put a bump um, on the back of the ankle in through here and a little bump on the back of the ankle in through there. So that'll look like those dew claws. Now I'm going to separate out the mane from the, from the head. So I'm going to put my ear um, up in this region up and through here. So I'm going to kind of outline the, um, especially the right side of the ear like that. And I'm also going to outline, there's two parts to the lion's mane. There's the main part, the main part of the mane where it's over the neck. And then there's another kind of color that wraps around the face, which is a lighter tone. So I'm going to separate those two right now. I, so this is the, this is where my ear is going to go. And then I'm going to give myself a curved line that's going to come down about right in through here. That's going to separate that kind of face, facial hair from um, the big dark mane that I'm going to have in through here. So now that I've separated those two pieces, I can separate the big dark mane from the back of the body. So I can take it, I'm going to have it kind of going right over the edge of this leg in through here. And then it's going to kind of curve around the body. So you can even just give yourself kind of a curved line like that. So you can see that is kind of curving around the body and then fluff out or frill out the little edges to it. So just kind of pull that like that. So it's not just a solid line, something like that. And then the, the actual fur of the mane, this is where I'm going to pick up black plus my um, lion brown and I'm just going to give it some texture. I don't want to go all the way right now. I just want to kind of give it some some dark texture and I can do that with the um, black plus the um, plus the lion brown that I created. So again this is going to be this um, big area in through here. The top of the um, this mane is going to have some nice burnt sienna type of tones to take on the color from the um, from the sunset. But right now that looks good. I, while I have this darkness on my brush, I just reloaded with a little bit of black on the tip of my brush. This is where if you needed to switch brushes, you certainly could. I'm just going to mark where I want the eye. I'm going to just put a little kind of little mark in through there. Uh, just below the crest of the nose, I'm going to put the little nostril. And then I'm going to put um, the mouth. I need to go back a little bit further. He's a happy one. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of darkness in through here. This is separating the face from that side um, colored darkness or colored uh, mane. I'm also going to put a little darkness inside the ear. So just a little bit of darkness on my brush is going inside that ear. Um, and then I need to put just a little bit of darkness kind of um, in this belly area, but not a lot. So I just whatever the remnants were on my brush, and now I'm picking up some of my um, my lion tan or lion brown like that. So that just gives that that darkness in through there and maybe just a little bit down this leg think that that's pretty good. Um, I don't feel like I need to do much else for this step. Um, I'm picking up a tiny bit of my uh, lion tan plus a teeny tiny bit of white. I just kind of feel like I, I want to do a second coat in through here, but I don't want it to go as dark as the lion. I keep calling it lion tan, lion brown. <laughs> So that's where I just put a teeny tiny bit of white paint on my brush as well. So I can get a second coat in here, but it's not as dark as uh, that underbelly area. 
and I feel as though I need a touch more darkness pulled up this tail just to get that to go up just a little bit there we go and then we're going to be using for the next step so that's a good start here um, I'm going to use my small brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can certainly um, erase any uh, lines that any of your guidelines at this point because you're probably not going to um, need them because we're in the in the that was the step that we would have needed them for um, so if you have any guidelines for me I can just erase them with a little bit of water but you might need something else to help you along so if you need to do that go ahead and do that and then you can um, put this brush away take out the small round and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our line. I'm using my number one round brush. The colors I'm going to be using are my Lion Brown, white, um, red, yellow, burnt sienna, and that might be it. If I need to go into black, I will, but I'm not sure I will need to. So I really just want to lighten up the, the face. I want to put some nice... Um, blondish hair on this front part of the mane, some nice highlight on the top so it looks like it's glowing from the sunset. I want to add some highlights to the front of the legs so it looks like you know we've got um, that glow happening into the feet so I'm just going to finesse it a little bit more. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna is coming on in through here so before I start this step, I do want to make myself what I'm going to call a blonde color. It's going to be the only step I use it in. But um, So I have already made it on my palette here. How I achieved this was a little bit of white, my um, a touch of red. So the red is going to do some good stuff to it. A touch of burnt sienna, a touch of yellow. And you can just mix it together. Think of it like um, kind of a little bit more yellow of a skin tone. So if you you could even add brown to it, you know it's gonna be much duller than it is on your palette when we put it on top of those colors on the lion. So just know that whatever it is on on a white surface, it will be darker and duller when it goes on top of a dark surface. So that's my plan. That's why it's kind of a little on the vibrant side right now and we can adjust it as we go. So once I've got that in place, I think I want to work on my face first. So I know that uh, lines tend to have kind of a light um, fur around their eyes. They have the light fur around the, the front of their muzzle. Um, and then it'll just kind of fade back into where it meets this fur in through here. So I'm going to actually just start with a little bit of white on my brush. Just a teeny tiny bit. Uh, this is such a s small, small little detail. So I'm going to um, put some right underneath this nose. And again, I know that it will take on some of the color that is underneath it. So I can start it pretty darn bright right where it is um, on the left hand side because th that is closest to my light source so I can start the paint right there and then just let myself kind of run out of paint as I go to the right and that's going to um, make it look duller as it goes to the right hand side and mine was pretty darn smiley so I'm gonna make them <laughs> we'll make them a little bit more serious um, as I go to this right I can also pick up a little bit of brown. I don't know if I even told you the colors I was going to use in this step, but um, I'll call them out as I use them if I didn't already say it. So I just picked up my burnt umber. You could certainly pick up your lion brown if you wanted to, but I just picked up a little bit of burnt umber because it was going to be a little bit richer of a tone as I come into this um, face. And I'm now just tapping my brush with the remnants that are on my brush so the face has a little bit of texture to it like that even right on top of that nose and then right around these eyes I'm going to pick up a little bit more white and I'm going to give this brighter area right around those eyes that might be too bright and I, I may back it off a little bit in a minute but 
I can certainly just add these light tones and then um, put a color on top of them as well. So that's what I'm opting to do. So we've got some nice contrast with the, um, with the sun and it'll allow us to really have some great, um, some great color in the face. So I'm gonna put a little bit of lightness above those eyes too. Maybe a little bit right on this ear. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that um, blonde color and start to kind of incorporate it on the ear as well as this little front main part in through here, just right up in through there. And again, I'll adjust it a little bit in a, in a little bit. <laughs> so I'm just adding a little bit of this to the face. He's already looking pretty handsome. I'm picking up more of that blonde to go right in th um, this fur around the face. So I don't want to just use this one color. So I definitely have the um, the color underneath of the um, of the lion brown, but I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt sienna as well, especially kind of on this left hand side. So it'll take on the hues and the glow of the sunset. It'll play off of um, off of the fur. I'm going to put some right by that ear, and maybe a little bit. So this is burnt sienna plus the blonde color. I love this. This burnt sienna is looking great to me. So I'm going to put some up here too on the head. And of course, I'm using it very um, kind of bold on this left edge. But when I go to um, to the backside of the animal, I'm not going to be this this brave with these colors because it's going to. I want it to. I want the um, the intensity of the light from the sun to be um, visible here and maybe not as visible on the back of the animal, so that way it gives it that dimensional element, maybe just a touch coming down in through here. So that looks pretty cool. I feel like I need a little bit more white uh, right in through here, so I just picked up a little bit more white. Oh, I just totally got rid of them all. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do something about that. So I erased the mouth. I'm picking up a tiny bit of brown. Put that back a little bit. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes you, these tiny details, my eyes just are not totally fit for these tiny little details. I just picked up, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white plus my blonde to get um, some maybe a little bit more fur on this, on this um, beard and just pull out these little tiny hairs in through here. Here we go. And then maybe just a little bit more on that nose and of course you can fiddle with that mouth placement as much as you want. I feel like I want this even a little bit lighter in through here. Maybe a little bit. It's tough to stop on these small details. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to move on to my um to the back cuz the back isn't going to take as much attention as this little front. I wanted this front to really show the um the texture on on the main and I think I've I think I've done that so I'm gonna just kind of move if I can ever stop. <laughs> Hair is one of my favorite things to do and when I get this this uh these these uh uh animals that have this long flowy stuff on them it's like yeah I just get excited and I just kind of keep wanting to go. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the body and the legs and stuff. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that blonde for the front side of these legs and I don't want them to get lost in the um, in the background. So if I need to go lighter, I certainly can. I just wanna put maybe a little bit on the paw. I feel though this one is probably the back side of the paw. So I think I need a little bit of darkness. I'm picking up a touch of black. On, I don't I don't feel I should be seeing these toes because they're on that side of the body. So I gave toes here where I didn't need to. So this is gonna be the um, the back paw part on that foot over there. I guess I was not paying attention when I did that. Um, but I can put a little bit of that blonde color on the tippy top. There we go. That makes more sense to me. I'm picking up white plus my blonde to give myself um, a highlight on the top of these toes in through here because they really have puffy 
kind of um, feet. I say puffy. <laughs> they have they have feet with big claws on them. So over here, I'm going to just kind of put those in through there, and then I can. I feel I'm going to use my um, my lion brown plus white to give myself a nice highlight over here on the body. A little bit more of my. And right where the um, body is going to pop out the most. So this is going to be where, in essence, the maybe the top of the rib cage is. And then I can fade it down. I just pe keep picking up my um, my lion brown. I can fade it up a little bit and just kind of tap it to get it where I want. Wipe my brush off. Keep picking up my my darker brown and if uh, my lion brown and if you felt that you needed to do you know needed to pull it in a, a different color range if you if that's too light you can always pick up a little bit of your burnt umber and just kind of tone it down a little bit but I think I like it like that so I'm gonna leave it <laughs> I'm gonna put a little bit of lightness in through here maybe on this thigh in through here make them look nice and healthy and then just make sure I've got a nice second coat back in through here. I feel like on the legs, I might want to add a touch of my burnt sienna. Um, and maybe a little bit of my blonde color just to... Mm, that's not light enough, so a little bit more white. Just to kind of make sure that we've got a little bit of um, the highlight onto, onto them that we want. And in through here, I'm going to pick up a little bit of... Um, my blonde plus my dark, my uh, lion brown to give just a little extra um, kind of uh, dimension in this main, main part, the main part of the main. And if you go too light, you can always just pull back or bring back a tiny bit of black. So whatever you know, intensity you want it in is totally up to you. I feel like this is kind of too solid of an area, so I can just pull up a couple of little black pieces in there as well. And then I would just fiddle. So once I've got everything in place where I want, you know, maybe maybe I put a little bit more blonde in the face, maybe I, you know, amp up the color on the ear or the color up on the head. It would just be about fiddling at this point, maybe a little bit more white or maybe even a little yellow. Yellow and my gold, put a little extra oomph on that highlight in the front. You can do as, you know, bring it into whatever vibrancy that is comfortable to you. And then once you've got it in a place that it is enjoyable to you, we are going to be using this small brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it. He's so handsome now. Wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm going to be using my number one round. I typically sign mine in the lower left or the lower right. I think I'm going to go lower uh, lower left on this one. I'm going to use my lavender color, and I'm signing it right on this rock right here. So I like to sign mine with my initials, but you, of course, can sign yours with your first name or the date. You can make up a special symbol. Whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really cool sunset animal image. <laughs> I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.